Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Mike and All Angels. Especially to those of you joining us online, I hope that you will download today's bulletin and join us in our prayers and our singing. And now standing as you are able, let us join together in our opening hymn. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Children at this time are invited to exit the East Door for Children's Chapel.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Will you please be seated for the reading of the word. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Seek the Lord and live, or he will break out against the house of Joseph like fire, and it will devour Bethel with no one to quench it. Ah, you that turn justice to wormwood and bring righteousness to the ground, they hate the one who reproves in the gate, and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore, the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud, honor your father and mother. He said to him, teacher, I've kept all these since my youth. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children, and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Like many of you, we have moved our family quite a few times in our adulthood. And as you know, when you move from place to place to place, you kind of have to pack up all your stuff and then get it over there. And then usually things get moved with you that you don't often need. And so there's this lovely moment that I find that is deeply satisfying whenever we move to a new house where we get to purge a bunch of stuff that we haven't seen or touched or used or need in years and years. And when we moved to our current house here in Dallas, a friend of mine who lived just a couple streets away said, hey, can we show up? Can we help you do things? And I said, no, not really. We really, we really have it covered. And he said, well, how about this? I've got a, and I quote, a big Texas truck. And he said, and when you're ready, I'll help you load up my truck and we can take stuff you don't need anymore to the dump. And I said, to the dump? What is, where is this dump? And so he explained to me where you could go and you could like back your vehicle in and you could like leave stuff. And I said, oh my gosh, could we loaded up his truck and we took it to the dump and it is just like an environmental disaster and so satisfying to actually get rid of this stuff that we don't need in our house. And I did this and I was so much more excited about it than I ever should have been. And then it, I realized, why do we have so much stuff? So much stuff that we don't need this stuff. And I get excited about going and getting rid of this stuff. Why? Why do we have just so much? We accumulate and we possess and we often don't need most of it. We often don't want most of it after a while and yet the stuff seems to grow on its own. (laughs) 
We have passages in today's gospel lesson, if you were listening, that kind of talks about this overabundance of possessions and how it can actually begin to weigh us down and control us and guide us. And Jesus wants none of that. We are continuing through this gospel of Mark and Mark wastes very little time on words. He tells very quick stories very fast. And today we jump right into a big problem. It's a problem of stuff. It's a problem of wealth. And this problem is one that is not anchored in simply just money. Instead, it's anchored in this idea of treasure. And elsewhere in the Gospels, we hear Jesus give a line that is very important to me. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. You see, churches often get those things backwards. We think if people care enough, they'll give. We think if people care enough, they'll give their time, their talent, their treasure. And actually, Jesus reorders that. Jesus says, where you give your time, talent, and treasure is where you will care. And doesn't that seem right? How many of us give our time, talent, or treasure in ways that then become most important to us? And Jesus wants the most important thing to be most important to us. We see two stories in today's gospel lesson that unpacks and twists this idea for us. And both these stories we know pretty well. The first about a man who seems to have a lot of stuff and the second about that pesky camel. And so we're gonna start with the first story in today's gospel lesson. A man runs up to Jesus and he says, how can I inherit eternal life? And then this man and Jesus have a nice moment. Jesus says, well, you got to keep the commandments. You've got to kind of play along and do the right thing. And the man, I can imagine him saying, yes, yes, I have done all of that. I'm good. And Jesus says, oh, yes. And there's this one other thing. This one other thing is you've got to sell what you own and give all your money to the poor and then follow me. And the man grieving turns away and walks away. And what Jesus does not do is super important here. Jesus doesn't say, wait, 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 have a half. <laughs> nope, there is no negotiation here. Jesus makes a very clear statement that is really important to us about not being controlled. Now, had that man effectively given stuff away in a different sense and then picked up and followed Jesus, would that have been enough? Maybe. But what's interesting about this story to me is that he was shocked. Shocked is the word we see in scripture. Why would he have been shocked? Jesus is this itinerant, random guy walking around. He did not have a lake house. He did not have an office. He did not have a horse. I mean, he had nothing. He just walked around. He didn't even have food. He kind of like found it on his way. And yet this man who apparently trusted him enough to say, how do I get what it is that you're offering, shocks him by saying, don't be attached to the world. Let that stuff go. And then once you've let it go, come follow me. And yet he walked away. You see, this world teaches us to accumulate. We have all in our own ways been taught how to earn and achieve and accumulate and save and protect. And so this message is extremely countercultural to us because we say, wait a minute, we've worked really hard for all this stuff, stuff. And yet Jesus says that cannot be the most important thing to you. And the problem with wealth is that if we're not careful, it can accidentally and unintentionally become the most important thing. And if it is most important, God can never be. And so then we get to the second story today. Jesus tells the story to his disciples and he says, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. And the disciples were greatly astounded and they said to one another, then who can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, for mortals, it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Now, much has been said about this passage. One of my favorite interpretations of this passage is that the eye of the needle was some kind of skinny little gate into the city of Jerusalem, maybe Damascus, it depends on where you're looking. And that when camels would come loaded up with all their stuff, 
they would have to actually unload everything that they were carrying in order to squeeze through this little gate, the eye of the needle. So quite literally, a camel filled with stuff could not actually get in to the city unless it put all its stuff down. See that? You put the possessions down, they become less important to you, you can squeeze through, you can get in, and that's a great interpretation. Except there's no evidence that that eye of a needle ever existed. And so, good, hold on to that, that's no problem. But I think where we can take this story is a little bit deeper. Because although the camel going through the eye of a needle is a great image, the disciples were astounded and said, well, then who can be saved? This question that they ask is so very human because think of what they have done. These disciples have walked away from their whole lives to follow Jesus. In a sense, they've kind of done the thing that the man at the beginning of the story wasn't able to do. They've walked away from their stuff. And yet Jesus still says, the camel can't get through the eye of a needle. And so they say, wait a minute, well, then who can be saved? And Jesus makes the big statement of the day. It is impossible for us to save ourselves. But with God, all things are possible. This twist on eternal life, this promise that God makes through Christ, this invitation that every single one of us has to a life that is eternal, is absolutely rooted in and predicated on making sure God is number one. God being number one, starting with God is actually quite hard. We like God, right? Yes, nod. Okay, yes, thank you. We like this idea. We want to be good people. We want to love people. And yet to actually start with God, that's a big ask. It's a big ask because it feels vulnerable. It feels as if we're sort of giving up on something that we've worked really hard to achieve. And yet Jesus's message today has nothing to do with the amount of stuff we have, nothing to do with the amount of money we have, nothing to do with the amount of talent that we have, what Jesus is really saying is we need to start with, make most important, our first priority to be responding to God's love. When we respond to God with love, when we put God first, when we love God with all our heart, then everything else takes care of itself. When you take these two stories together, a challenge to this man and this promise of eternal life, it can feel a bit heavy. Does it seem like good news to you? Because I think for a lot of us, especially Americans, especially right here, this story can feel a bit scary, judgy, rough, sharp, not exactly the good news that we might wish for. And yet, what if instead of thinking that we're gonna lose anything, we allow this truth that Jesus is giving us today to actually free us? What if the good news moment today is that we do not have to be controlled by anything that the world says is important? What we do in our work, the stuff we have accumulated, the power that we hold, we do not have to be controlled by any of it. We can be freed, released, from the control of our possessions, released from the pressure of the worldly rat race that we're all pretty good at, released to follow the Jesus who loves us, not our stuff, not our abilities, not what we have done or what we ever will do, loves just us, freed, freed from the bonds even of our own humanity, in order to receive that eternal gift of life and love that passes all understanding. Our gifts that we all have are to be shared. When we share those gifts, 
when we give of ourselves generously, when we make sure we put God first, everything else will fall in line. Today we are being invited to actually give without any reservation, free, free of anything this world holds up. All we have to do now is just say yes. Amen. Friends, will you please stand? And as Christians have done throughout the centuries and continue to do around the world, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let's pray for the whole state of Christ church and the world. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury. Michael, our presiding bishop. George and Michael, our bishops. Our parish clergy and their families. For the Clergy Family Commission, the diocesan youth ministers, and for all bishops and other ministers. for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray for all those on the St. Michael prayer list and for Scott Calhoun, Austin Disney, Jan Jones, Catherine Keeling, Jose Mata, John Morlock. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died, especially Michael Edwin Mike, Posey Schwartz, M.A. De Jesus Reyes, and Maria, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom, Lord, 
Let your loving kindness be upon them. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now kneeling as you're able, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. We please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning once again, everyone. We're very glad that you're here to worship with us today. Special word of welcome to anyone visiting today. We would love to get to know you better and to help you to connect to this St. Michael community. And so I encourage you to grab one of the cards in the pew back in front of you, fill that out and drop it in the offering plate or to one of our ushers on your way out the door so we can be in touch. Those of you joining us online, visit stmichael.org, click visit and give us your contact information and we will help connect you here to this community in many mission and ministry ways. A few things to bring to your attention. First off, next week, we are going to be having a choral evensong at 5.30 here in the church, and it will feature our young singers, our choristers. And so we hope that you will join us for a special evening service of evensong at 5.30 here in the church next Sunday. And then looking ahead on Saturday, October 30th, we're going to be having a special St. Michael's Farmer's Market with a tent or treat for our youngest kids, or for those of you who just love candy. Come out on Saturday morning from 10 to noon. There's information in your bulletin about this and show off your costumes. I may or may not have tried mine on yesterday. And so I hope to see you all at the farmer's market on Saturday, October 30th. And then finally, as you heard, we are getting ready to get into our pledge campaign, our stewardship campaign this year. This is when we ask everyone to consider how you can give both time, talent, and treasure to the shared mission and ministries here at St. Michael. Last week, we launched this campaign by having a scavenger hunt for Jesus. And I want you to know, hundreds of people ran around the church campus looking for Jesus, we had to like replenish all of our stocks. And so if you have not gone on a scavenger hunt for Jesus yet, then you are missing out. And I don't want you to miss out. So I want you to go to the stewardship tables, get your clue, find Jesus somewhere here on the church campus. And as you do so, you'll be learning more about the ways in which we in this community lean into and support one another and all of our spiritual giftedness and how we can share those gifts together here at St. Michael. And so I hope you will enjoy all of that, whether you are young or young at heart. And now today is birthday Sunday. And so if you have or will celebrate a birthday in October, I invite you to stand where you are so we can say a special word of blessing over you. Very good. Yes, come on. And while our friends stand, I invite everyone to turn in your bulletins to page eight and join me in the prayer for our friends on their birthdays. Let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday, everyone. Now let's continue our worship 
Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Will you please stand? Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks to God.